you guys ready for an awesome adventure this afternoon? <laughs> All right, today we're going to have an amazing adventure. We're going to explore Australia, New Zealand, Ecuador, but more importantly, we're going to explore the human spirit and the little things that allow groups of ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary things together. They have traveled here from every corner of the world for 10 non-stop days and nights. They must hike, mountain climb, paddle, ride, and race through some of the most captivating yet dangerous terrain in one of the last great wilderness areas on Earth. Now, before you think this is another crazy sports analogy, tell me if this doesn't describe your real life, if you didn't know I was describing a sport. All right, so I have small teams of men and women, and we're trying to make it through a seemingly endless series of checkpoints in pursuit of a nearly impossible goal, working against extreme time pressures and constantly changing market conditions with the goal of doing it better than anybody else in the industry. Welcome. Well, yes, welcome to, my, <laughs> welcome to my world. I'm honored to share with you what I've learned from some of the world's greatest extreme teammates about what it takes to get to the next highest peak, build and lead a world-class team that always gets to the next highest peak, time and time again, no matter how difficult the challenge, no matter how tough, how tough the climb. And I'll tell you the secret right off the bat. The higher you get on any mountain, what happens to the terrain? It gets steeper, right? So your ability to continue to get to the next highest peak is not just a matter of you trying harder as an individual. It's not just a matter of reaching up. It's a matter of reaching out to the people around you and creating what I call true human synergy. On the ridge to Eton Peak, the lead teams are learning that things are not always as they seem. There's a fake, false summit. It'll be soul destroying when they get there and realize they've only gone a third of the way and now need to descend and climb higher and higher than ever before. I remember that whole entire section being a very, very difficult one for me. I was pushed to my limit. It was incredibly hot. My feet hurt so, so, so bad. The terrain was really uneven and the section was a lot longer than we ever dreamed it was. So my expectations of having a nice short caving section and a run back to the beach became this six hour night marathon on really, really bad feet with the team right on our heels. And so there I am just crying and crying and I have to stop because there's a 1200 foot drop on both sides of this ridge line and I know I'm gonna die if I keep moving so I'm standing there crying. Finally, Mike realizes I'm not with them, comes trucking back up the ridge line and I'm just bracing for impact. And he stops, and very calmly, he says something I'll never forget. He said, all right, Rob, uh, I got a wife and a daughter, and I know that you people have to do this. <laughs> and then he said, but there's a difference between people that are going to win the Eco Challenge and people that are going to lose the Eco Challenge. And it's not that people that are going to win the Eco Challenge aren't crying, because that's OK, and this is really hard. It's just that people that are gonna win this race are crying, and then he grabbed my hand and said, and they're walking. <laughs> the most interesting thing about that race is we weren't one of the teams picked to win. We had never raced together before, and we were merely above average athletes. But somehow, as we made our way that 500 kilometers, six nonstop days and nights together, side by side, on mountain bikes and native canoes, and on foot using just a map and compass to guide our way. We realized that we had something pretty special as a team. Our outcomes were so much greater than the sum of our individual strengths. And we weren't just walking side by side towards that common goal. We were figuratively and literally carrying one another. And at the end of the race, when we had shocked the endurance racing world and won the world championships, we realized we had discovered something pretty magical, a formula, if you will, not just for winning adventure races, but for peak performance in every aspect of our lives. In other words, we had discovered how winning works.